Hello, grade 10 learners. How are you? I hope you are all doing well. And this will be my second video session for our science subject. The first time was all about independent learner learning. And this time, we will try to summarize or sum up everything you have just learned in your first module, which is all about volcanoes, earthquakes, and mountain ranges. So are you ready? Again, this is teacher Jethro A. Godoy, your teacher, your science teacher. You know what? One of the characteristics of a scientist is that they are very curious. They always ask questions every time they see things, every time they look at their surroundings around them, things around them. It triggers questions, and that is basically their, uh, their innate uh, characteristic or their attitude towards things. So I hope you are one of them. Maybe someday you will be one of them. And by looking at this picture in front of you, it's a moving picture. It can trigger questions, right? So questions like, uh, how does it look like when we, when we uh, uh, cut it into half? Or what are the mechanisms behind this earth? And what are the wonders? There are many mysteries and wonders behind this earth. And in this topic, in this lecture, uh, we will try to answer some of the few questions that you might have. And we will also touch topics uh, find in your uh, self-learning modules. I want you to, if not, if you cannot memorize these terms, I want you to remember these terms, at least familiarize with these terms, because as we go on with our lecture, uh, we will be uh, using these terms, terminologies. Number one, geologic picture. What are these ge geologic pictures? How do they look like? And we will also discuss earthquake and what is epicenter, mountain belt, volcanoes, tsunamis. It's pronounced, uh, you will pronounce that as tsunami. Okay, not tsunami. Okay, and plate tectonics, plate boundaries, lithosphere, crust, volcanic eruptions, continental crust, oceanic crust, disaster, and disaster preparedness. All these things will be used through all throughout my lecture. So after going through this lecture, or this is anchored on your module, you're expected. So I'm expecting that you can describe and relate the distribution of active volcanoes, the earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts to plate tectonic theory. And number two, you can enumerate ways to ensure disaster preparedness during earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. And lastly, you can suggest ways by which one can contribute to government efforts in reducing damage due to earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. You must be very blessed because you are in the Philippines. Because the Philippines has a lot of geologic features. Like for example, we have this majestic and beautiful Mount Mayon in Luzon. And also we have the Sierra Madre, this series of mountain belts. This one, the Sierra Madre, this picture was taken during the lockdown period. Usually Manila, during this time, uh, it is usually covered with smog yung, because Manila is very polluted na. So, hindi, makla, hindi masyadong uh, clear yung picture or backdrop na Sierra Madre. This was taken just this year during quarantine. So, hindi masyadong, hindi maraming mga sasakyan, wala masyadong usok. That is why it's, the, the, sky, the sky was very clear. And you can see there, Sierra Madre. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Aside from that, aside from being blessed, uh, economically, uh, these geologic features, for example, in Mount Mayon, even in Mount Apo, we have the Mount Apo in, the, in Davao, right? So Mount Mayon, if you live there nearby Mount Mayon, although risky siya, parang uh, uh, hazardo siya, in a sense na malapit ka sa volcano, volcano hindi mo alam kailan siya mag -irap. So parang risky siya, pero meron din siyang benefits. Like for example, yung ano, Yung economically, the, the, the farmers there, the, plant, uh, the plants, doesn't need, ano na, the plant doesn't need uh, fertilizers for it to grow or produce uh, more crops or more, ano, more fruits. So, kapag malapit ka doon, and if you have farm, good thing doon is you don't need fertilizer. Kasi yung fertilizer is galing sa volcanoes. Meron siyang pinoproduce na mga fertilizers or mga minerals. That's one good thing. And there are more. 
And in Mindanao, we have a lot of geologic features. We have Mount uh, Kitanglad in Bukidnon. We have Mount Apo, the tallest mountain in the Philippines. And it's an active volcano. Pero hindi pa siya na record. Wala pang record na nag erupt siya yung Mount Apo natin. Pero sana naman hindi naman siya mag erupt di ba? Okay. So this time, I'm going to explain what is plate tectonics in the most easiest way possible. So I'll maybe, I'll maybe using a vernacular language or even Tagalog sometimes for you to be able to understand more or even better the concepts about plate tectonics. When you say plate tectonics, uh, it is actually the movement of the plates, of uh, the plate boundaries, because as we all know, Earth is composed of different plates. So partial plates, imagine you have a plateau. When you buak them, when you break them, when you break a plateau, diba? it will broken into several pieces. Okay? For example, you have this circle, ano? you have circle na plateau, and kung ibuak ni mo siya, when you try to fix them, marin siya mga plates. Parang ganyan din ang earth natin. So it is broken down into several plates or mga pieces. And these pieces are continuously moving. Even right now, this time, naga boom sila. Look at this first picture. Okay, this is the Earth's lithosphere. And you all know already, diba? During your uh, earlier years dito sa high school, alam nyo na we have different layers of the Earth. We have the inner core, we have the outer core, we have the mantle. And always take note that the mantle has the upper part of the mantle. Okay? Upper part of the mantle. We call this one asthenosphere. And also, this color brown here, right after the asthenosphere, this is actually part of the lithosphere. So this one, this lithosphere, you can see this uh, water over here. Underneath that is oceanic crust. And this here is, you call this continental crust. Yung continental crust, meaning walang tubig. So this is part of the lithosphere. So they are the outermost part or the outermost layer of the Earth. Now, when we talk about lithosphere, there are two types. We have continental, meaning yung nasa lupa, lupain, and the other one is oceanic crust, meaning yung crust na, na uh, below niya yung merong water or may, merong ocean. That's why we call them oceanic crust. Like this, for example, in this picture, this is the continental and oceanic crust. Remember, continental is thicker than the oceanic crust. And also remember that Oceanic is denser than continental crust. Okay? Take note of that. And beneath that, you have this upper mantle. Meaning, uh, beneath the, uh, the crust or the lithosphere itself is the upper mantle na. And then you have the mantle na talaga. Okay? So just take note of those things. Because you already know that the Earth is constantly moving and because of the plate tectonic, meaning there is the movement of the plates, of several plates, they have also boundaries. Meaning, for example, this plate, this is Pacific plate. We call this Pacific plate. Around this Pacific plate is the boundary of Pacific plate. Meaning this is the boundary of Pacific plate. We have also Nazca. We have South American plate, African plate, and many more, many more. So along that plate boundaries, different yung movement nila. For example, if you can see at, at the cursor, the divergent plate boundary, this one, this colored blue here, ang mga movement ng plate dyan is divergent. This color blue naman, dark blue here, over here, you can see my cursor, mouse cursor. Ang movement dyan is convergent boundaries. And this violet colored here, boundary siya, the movement there is transformed plate boundary. So therefore, we have different types of movement sa boundary, along the plate boundaries. We have the divergent, convergent, and transformed. But this time, we will not talk about that because that is not part of our lesson. Later, discuss natin siya sa later module. So this is the whole picture of the different plates of the Earth, meaning because of the theory of plate tectonics, meaning these plates, these plates are constantly moving in several directions. Okay, iba iba yung mga movement nila at directions. Always remember that these plates are moving, and because of this movement, magkakaroon tayo ng mga different geologic events or mga features. For example. Because of the movement of this along this plate boundary, maybe magkakaroon tayo ng mountains. 
And this side, because of the different plate movement, magkakaroon ng earthquakes every time they move. Or this one, every time na magkakaroon ng movement, magkakaroon ng reach. Maraming geologic features na uh, ma mabubuo every time they move. Like for example, all the mountains, for example, that, that Mount Apo, that is the product of the plate tectonics, the movement of the plates along the plate boundaries. And all, everything, the mga features na makikita natin sa Earth, they are the product of plate tectonics or the movement of the plates along the plate boundaries. Now, this time, I am showing you the boundaries of the different plates. This one, uh, that boundary, obvious naman yung outline, di ba? It is the, the plate boundaries. Now, my question is, can you spot the Philippines? Can you locate the Philippines? Where is the Philippines? Yes, over there on your right side. Di ba, meron siya right side? Yung maliit konti dyan. Hindi ko point kasi sa mouse ko. And if you can see the Philippines, merong plate boundary dyan. Dito banda sa ano ng Philippines, sa east ng Philippines. Therefore, because the Philippines is located along that boundary, meaning marami mga geologic features tayo makikita sa Philippines, which is true. Meron tayong mountain belts. We have a lot of I know, we have a lot of volcanoes and we can experience a lot of earthquakes. That, that is a geologic event. Therefore, because the Philippines is located along, almost, or along the plate boundaries, expected na marami talaga tayo mga geologic events like earthquakes at mga geologic features na mountain, mountain belts, and volcanoes. Mga mountains, di ba? Amazing. Now, let's move on to the distribution of volcanoes. Saan ba makikita natin usually mga volcanoes? By looking at this picture, you are very familiar with the Ring of Fire, right? That color red there is where the volcanoes are located. So, they are not, not that very evenly distributed, pero they, we, can, we can see it, as we can see it, usually makikita sila natin sa mga plate boundary. Like for example, dito sa Pacific Ring of Fire, that one is a Pacific plate. Maraming mga volcanoes natin na makikita natin along the boundaries. Okay? We have, in the Philippines, we have a lot of volcanoes. Okay? Surrounding the Ring of Fire, there are a lot of volcanoes. And remember, most of the locations of the volcanoes are along the plate boundaries. Okay? And as you can see this, can you see the Arabian plate? Diba meron siya yung dark jet? That's a boundary. There are also concentration of volcanoes there. Diba? There are also cases na uh, may volcano pero hindi siya along the plate boundary. Like for example, that Hawaiian spot over the Pacific plate. Diba? Meron siyang hot spot dyan. Ano kaya yan? We will try to discover what is that hotspot. That is a very interesting topic as well. Hindi siya makikita sa plate boundary, pero merong volcanoes. Okay, meron din tayo dito sa may malapit sa East Pacific Rise. Meron din isa dyan. Meron din sa Nazca Plate and many more na hindi, uh, hindi siya makikita sa boundary. Okay? So, but almost all of the volcanoes are located along the plate boundaries. Okay? Okay, how about distribution of earthquake epicenters, meaning mga earthquakes? This data was taken a uh, 5 to 10 year period. Okay, as you can see, saan natin makikita usually ang mga earthquake epicenters? When we draw, uh, when we withdraw, when we connect dots, the red dots, it will resemble a plate, di ba? Plate boundary. So almost the same din siya sa volcanoes na kung saan yung mga boundary, doon din natin makikita yung mga volcanoes. The same way, the same as true as the earthquake epicenters. Kung saan yung mga boundaries, plate boundaries, doon din natin usually, or doon din mangyayari usually ang mga earthquake. Say for example, let's concentrate here sa Pacific Ring of Fire. This one, if you're going to draw, although yung Pacific Ring of Fire, you might, you might be imagining Pacific Ring of Fire as a perfect circle, no? Perfect, perfect ring. No, it it looks like almost the same, pero hindi talaga siya perfect circle, ha. So this is a Pacific in the middle. Uh, when you uh, in the Pacific Ring of Fire, in, when you connect the dots, 
Okay? Usually, itong mga dots makikita natin sa plate boundary. Okay? Look at the Philippines. Di ba yung Philippines? Yung almost red na siya ang Philippines kasi maraming earthquakes dyan. Why? Because Philippines is located malapit sa boundary ng Pacific Plain. Okay? Kung saan yung boundary, doon din mangyayari ang mga usually ang mga earthquakes, lalo na yung mga major earthquakes. So in short, when we relate the distribution of earthquake epicenters to the distribution of volcanoes, they are almost this, they are located almost the same. Kung saan yun ang mga location ng mga earthquakes natin, doon din usually mga location ng mga volcanoes. And remember, kung merong volcanic eruption, meron ding earthquake, obviously. Okay? Because it's a major event, geologic event. So, kung may mangyaring volcanic eruption, expected na meron ding earthquake. So, that is why the distribution of earthquake epicenters and distribution of volcanoes are almost the same. Take note. Take note that. How about the distribution of mountain belts? Now, try to look at this picture. Okay, that red color there is where the major mountain belts are located. So, try to look at, try to observe the South American plate. Saan usually makikita natin ang mountain belts? Diba? Sa boundary din. In between the Nazca at South American plate. Probably, ang movement ng plates dyan between ng South American and Nazca plate is converging, meaning patagbo ang ilang direction. Kung patagbo sila, therefore, ang yuta dito mag mutaas, mudako siya. That is why, dito yon doon natin usually makikita yung mga major mountain belts, matataas ang mga belts. The same as dito sa Juan de Foca, sa North American plate. The same here din dito sa uh, Indian plate banda sa ibabaw ng Indian plate, meron din. So, almost the same din siya sa distribution ng mountain belts. Kung saan yung mga boundaries ng plates, doon din usually makikita natin ang mga mountain belts. Okay? Okay, this is what I am telling you. Na yung earth natin is broken into several pieces called plates and they are constantly moving, pero yung movement nila in different directions. Say for example, doon tayo sa ibabaw mag-start, the Eurasian plate, ang direction niya is patungong uh, east, uh, no, uh, southeast, parang pa direction siya sa south, pababa, medyo pababa sa uh, south. Okay? Yung Philippine plate naman natin, ang direction niya is pataas. Meaning, nag-converge sila ng Eurasian at ng Philippine Plate. Yung Australian, pataas. Yung Antarctic, pababa. Yung African, papunta doon sa direction ng east, uh, northeast. And then, yung south at yung Nazca Plate, ano sila, nag-converge sila. Meaning, patagbo sila. Antarctic, di different na naman yung direction niya. So, meaning, yung mga different plates ng Earth, hindi sila the same ng direction. Merong nai nagtagbo, nai nagbulag, ano jud na no ang life. Nai magtagbo, nai magbulag. But anyway, just remember that each plate boundaries has different direction. That is why it uh, kung iba't iba yung direction nila. For example, kung magtagbo sila, it will give rise to a certain geologic feature. For example, kung magtagbo sila, ang yuta o ang yuta magtagbo, o may tabo makatukod or makatukod, makabuo sila o dagbo nga mga mountains. And that things, okay, this uh, events, we will discuss this in a more detailed way later sa ating module because this will be one module, yung mga movement ng plate tectonics at ano-ano ang mga geologic features na maaring mangyari every time they move. Okay? So therefore, if I am going to ask you this question, can you now explain how these geologic features are distributed? The mountain belts, the earthquakes, and the volcanoes. So to answer that in the simplest way, uh, they are almost located the same. Yung location nila are almost the same. They are in close proximity, meaning malapit lang sila. Kung saan yung volcanoes, doon din yung usually mangyayari yung earthquakes. The same thing with the mountain belts. Usually all of them are located in close proximity along the plate boundaries. That would be your answer.
Because Philippines is blessed with so many geologic events or features, we have volcanoes, mountain belts, and many more, so on and so forth. Philippines was tagged as disaster-prone country, meaning malapit tayo sa sakon na, meaning disaster-prone country tayo. According to several papers or newspapers or articles, they said that Philippines is ranked third in 2018 World Risk Index of most disaster-prone countries in the world. And according to World Bank, the Philippines is highly prone to natural disasters such as, such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tropical cyclones, and floods, making it one of the most disaster-prone countries in the world. Diba nakakabahala? It's scary to hear these uh, articles, reading these articles. Like recently, just last year, diba, we, we have been traumatized by the series of earthquakes. Hindi lang yung konti earthquake yung mga major earthquake talaga dito sa Mindanao, di ba? What did we do? So, is our country ready or disaster ready? Given that our country is a disaster-prone country, this picture actually was taken in Mindanao, in Kidapawan. This is actually a hotel. Look at that. The devastation brought by these earthquakes. So, meaning, kung disaster-prone country tayo, as a student, if I'm going to ask you, if you are as, uh, as a student, how can you, okay, how will you help yourself prepare? O gano ka baka preparado when these different natural disasters will strike anytime, anytime soon? How ready are you or how prepared are you? Because uh, hindi na natin ma-argue na ang Philippines talaga is a disaster-prone country. That is a question. Now, my question is, are you ready? when these calamities or natural disaster will hit anytime in the Philippines or in our local, in Davao City. How prepared is a Davao City or how prepared our school or our, even our community, Barangay Takunan, to combat, not to combat, to, uh, to at least prepare or minimize the effects of the devastations that can be, can be brought by these uh, natural disasters. Yan yung question natin. How can we uh, how can we help our community, even our home, our families, to prepare for these calamities? We will be discussing this in detail. Uh, yung every time na uh, kung may mangyaring earthquake, uh, tsunami, we will discuss that. And how can you help your family members and even yourself, okay, para maging ligtas sa mga sa, sa mga sakunang darating. So as you can see, this is an infographics about earthquake preparedness before, during, and after. So hindi lang during ka dapat handa. Dapat before the earthquake, dapat ready ka na. Example, you know the hazards in your area. I want you to read them all. Uh, uh, this um, medyo marami siya, pero I want you to read them carefully and assess, try to assess whether you are you have this already or meron uh, ready ka na sa ganitong mga aspects or preparations and during then diba, we did a lot of uh, earthquake drills during the pre-pandemic yung wala pang uh, covid diba? we did a lot of these uh, drills and after the after during the earthquake there must be also um, protocols na dapat natin susundin after the earthquakes kasi meron din mga aftershocks. So, I want you to read them carefully and 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 try to assess whether ready ka na ba sa ganito before, during, after, how prepared are you? Okay? As you can see, shown is the preparedness tips or ano, what will you do when tsunami happen? Okay? There are many signs of tsunami. I want you to read this carefully. And then there are steps to do okay, when tsunami uh, will happen in our country or in our locality. So what is tsunami? It is there. When does it, it occur? Kailan mangyayari ang tsunami? At ano yung impact ng tsunami? Okay, because we are also tsunami prone Davao City because we are along the coastal area. So malapit tayo sa dagat. So every time my uh, ano lang, palayo lang kung may earthquake na mangyari <clears throat> na malakas at nangyari yon sa ocean, yung doon malapit sa oceanic na, ano, na crust or lithosphere, probably 
may mangyari talaga na tsunami. So that is why if we are here an inhabitant nearby the <coughs> ocean, better prepare tayo sa mga ganitong mga pangyayari tsunami. And lastly, we have here the infographic preparedness for volcanic eruption. When volcanic eruption happened, kasi malapit din tayo sa mga kapo. Simba ko lang palayo. Okay, so I want you to read them carefully. This was written in Tagalog, which is very easy to understand. And try to assess whether ready na ba kayo, handa na ba kayo kung ang sakun na uh, mangyari. Because we cannot predict when these uh, events have, will happen. So I think that's that's it for this time, and I hope you you have a clear understanding of the scientific concepts about earthquake epicenters, volcanic uh, volcanoes, and mountain belts. Yung locations nila, saan sila distributed, saan yung distribution nila. Also about the different lake boundaries and what is plate tectonics all about, and so on. So next time I'll be posting another video that will help you understand even more the mechanism of this earth, this amazing earth that we live in. If you have questions, you can write down uh, your comment or your questions in the comment section so that I can uh, give you uh, give some important concepts na mag support sa mga, na mag answer sa mga questions. Niyo. So that's it for today. I hope you are doing well and you continue uh, answering your module and do not forget yourself as well, okay? Uh, take time to rest and relax, but do not uh, do not ano, uh, spend time relaxing magdula lang ng ML. So you can play, uh, you can do some physical exercises because that's good for you. Okay, hindi ilimit natin yung paggamit natin ng Facebook at mga social media na mga apps. Okay, you can play games like yung mga physical games that uh, na para maka-exercise ka. Okay, that's it for today and, and I hope that you had fun learning science. You know, science is a very interesting field and later on, baka because you are grade 10, uh, when you are very interested or inclined ka sa science and this will help you kung pagbutihan mo masyado yung science mo na, na klase, this will help you or this will be your ticket para, para mag-excel ka sa STEM na curriculum when you when you will become a senior high school, when you go to senior high school. That's it for today and bye-bye. See you next time.